Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, a warm welcome to all of you from your pastor Yeti. From heaven, we are in our second week of Advent. And day eight is light for the darkness. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. This revelation of Jesus Christ has to do with his relationship to the Father, to the human race, and to the church. It has to do with his relationship to Israel, to the nations, to our enemy, the devil, and to the coming judgment. Ministers faithful to the Word of God have always said that Christ can be found on every page of the Bible. In the Revelation, we see Him dominating the eternal future. The message of the book is the almost overwhelming portrayal of Christ's victory, bringing about the final destruction of Satan and all of his works. A part of our Christian restfulness comes from the fact that we are in the hands of a loving God who has already existed throughout all of the tomorrows. Because all time is in God, the flow of time never concerns God. He never has to run in an effort to catch up with the movement of time. The time, the end of time is seen by God just as easily as the beginning of time. That is why the Bible tells us that God knows the end from the beginning. That is why a godly man like John, caught up in the spirit of God, could be shown the outline of future events. They were future to him, and they are future to us. That is because we are in the stream of time. They are not future to God because he is not in the stream of time. Revelation is the one, is the only New Testament book that may be classified as predictive in its character and content. It has been interesting to me to find in the writings of Blaise Pascal, the great 17th century scientist and religious philosopher, his conclusion that no true prediction of mankind's future, future can be found anywhere within the Christian scriptures. About the predictive quality of the scriptures, we ought to be in agreement. If there cannot be any valid foresight, no revelation from God, nothing to warn us or prepare us for tomorrow, this life on earth would have to be considered a gloomy business indeed. And thankfully, we have a definite word, word, a promise upon which we can lean. And Peter, one of God's special spokesmen, expressed it this way. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you dwell that you take heed as unto a light that shined in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but the holy man of God, speak as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 19 to 21. As Christian believers, we are assured that no matter how dark it becomes around us, God will faithfully provide the illuminations of His Holy Spirit. The Old Testament offers, in the release of Israel from Egyptian bondage, a fitting illustration. When God was moving 
toward the climax of that deliverance, the darkness of night covered Egypt. But, miraculously, there was light in the dwellings of all of the Israelites. So, too, there is light even now for us who are Christian believers concerning our future. God's word is a light that shines in a dark place until the morning star arises in our hearts. Blessings to all of you in this second week of your Advent. And may the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yadi. Bye.